With mobile gaming controllers like the Razer Kishi and Backbone on the market, are the GameSir X2 and X2 Pro worth it? I'm Meggy the Tech Guy, and let's find out. First, we're going to talk about the build quality of these devices. The GameSir X2 and X2 Pro do have some pretty major differences between the two devices. To start with, you're looking at a little bit of a longer device with the GameSir X2 Pro, so it is able to accommodate a little bit of a larger device, although both of these devices can fit a Galaxy S23 Ultra inside of them. You will just feel it to be a little bit larger. If you got a slightly larger phone than the Galaxy S23 Ultra, it may not fit properly in the GameSir X2 versus the X2 Pro, so bear that in mind. But we can get into the nitty gritty here. The GameSir X2 Pro's buttons are larger. It does have an Xbox home button on it as well versus the regular buttons just being on the GameSir X2. So that's something to keep in mind for you guys is that with the X2 Pro, you do get a little bit larger buttons. You're getting better triggers on the GameSir X2 Pro. They are a bit better with the click and the actual resistance of the back triggers as well. So you will notice that in your day-to-day -day usage of playing games on this device that it is a little bit better quality if you were to go to the GameSir X2 Pro in terms of trigger feel for sure. But the joysticks feel very similar on both these devices. So in that regard, they're about the same size. The regular buttons though are a little bit smaller on the X2, so bear that in mind. And with the GameSir X2 Pro, you do get an additional two buttons on the back of the device. So that's really cool that they included two extra buttons that you could possibly map to other games that you're playing to really help aid in playing some of the Xbox Game Pass games that you wouldn't normally play on a mobile device. So they're not included on the GameSir X2, but again, keep in mind that this one is a bit cheaper than the GameSir X2 Pro, so bear that in mind. And like I said before, the GameSir X2 Pro does stretch out a little bit farther than the GameSir X2 does. So that is really something you should take note of if you have a super large device or a super large gaming phone that you're not normally familiar with and how large it is and how it could fit into one of these devices. It may still fit. I just want that to be noted to make sure that if you are looking at the build quality of these things that the X2 Pro could accommodate something larger. The X2 Pro is going to be the better device, but again, it is more expensive. But what's really awesome that included in the box along with the case which both of these devices come with a case that is very similar one is slightly larger to accommodate the x2 pro but they look exactly the same they each say games x2 or x2 pro on them respectively they do come with some nubs in the box you do get some quick guide information and stuff in both of these devices but the games x2 pro comes with one month free of game pass so that is also something to take a look at is essentially you're getting game pass included in the box for the games x2 pro so if you don't already have game pass you get a free month so you get 30 days to play for free and that's something I think that should be taken note and being a buying factor for getting the better device in my opinion. As for the cases and everything that come in the box, you do get them slightly different. There is a Velcro strap for the X2 Pro versus the other one is just a regular stretchy band for the X2, which is slightly different and also really weird that that's how they would do it between the X2 Pro and the X2, but it's something small, but I think it is something that you should note that comparing case to case, that you do get a slightly cooler case for the X2 Pro where you can just open the Velcro and pull the device out versus the X2 where you have to pull it out underneath the stretchy band and it does not open up like the Velcro does on the X2 Pro's case. They both come with nubs inside there which you can put in that are either convex or concave to put around your joysticks which is really nice for them to do that because you know they're small like I said earlier so when you're using them it's a little tough to navigate them and move them around if you you've got larger hands so you would like to put some nubs on them that are either convex or concave depending on your preference and how you like your joysticks to feel me personally i'm okay with it because i'm a casual gamer i'm not really a gamer's gamer so i don't really need the nubs i just play occasionally so i just use the joysticks as is personally but i know that it's a nice touch for them to include that so all in all the build quality of these devices is actually really nice for what you're getting and how inexpensive they truly are as gaming controllers. So the GameSir X2 and X2 Pro are both a go for me in build quality. Next, we can talk about experience for both of these devices. So everything that's really different from these devices is in the hardware category to me, in my opinion. Like I was saying earlier that you're just getting smaller buttons, all that stuff. But when you're actually playing these games, aside from the smaller buttons being on the X2, so it's a little bit harder to navigate. When playing, generally you're getting the same experience because it's the same layout. The trigger are going to be a little bit worse on the X2, but do I think that you're going to be like mad that you decided to save almost half the price on the X2 to play and 
get a pretty much the same experience no I'm, i mean you're gonna enjoy it either way but it is nice to know that if you wanted to upgrade there is something nicer out there for a little bit more money the whole experience of playing these games like playing on fortnite if you're playing Fortnite, you can definitely navigate really quickly through your weaponry. There is a weird thing where the triggers are kind of opposite, and I didn't really go into the mapping to change it up. I just let it play as is because I wanted to see how it worked out of the box in regard to playing games, especially with ones that just work natively, like Fortnite. So playing Fortnite on these devices is actually really a cool experience. It almost feels like a Nintendo-esque experience. So when you're playing, I do play a lot on my Nintendo Switch OLED, and my, my son and my girlfriend, they play on the Nintendo Switch Lite. So it's a very similar experience to playing games on those devices. It really does remind me of that kind of gaming experience, which is nice. So all in all, the experience of playing on here is great for Fortnite. When we get into Call of Duty Mobile though, there is some mapping that needs to be done and that process is a little cumbersome when you're trying to connect and map. It does automatically map when you do the process. There is a GameStar app that you have to download, which you will have to go through the process. They do have a step-by-step -step guide of what you need to do in order to set up the mapping so that it works perfectly fine with the games that you're trying to map that don't work out of the box, like Call of Duty. So when once you map it though, they actually work really nicely. I was playing Call of Duty Mobile after you know, it's a little bit of a learning curve to set it, but once it's mapped, it's mapped and you're ready to go and you can play and you can get some kills and get some shots. I actually played really well for this game. I've been playing Call of Duty Mobile a little, you know, for quite a bit on the device. So I wasn't like in the beginning stages of playing. So it was super easy for me. And you know, in playing, I actually was playing for a while and I had a good game. So I was getting quite a few kills. I was MVP of my team, which is really awesome. So these controllers really do help you in playing Call of Duty Mobile, in my opinion. Also with the Fortnite, like I said, it's, they're really great devices for these games and also for Genshin Impact uh, it does play really well with this game as well I, I do enjoy Genshin Impact I think it's a really great game to play and it's something that you know I really thoroughly enjoyed as an experience playing and using the joysticks and everything it just felt really fluid it felt really great on either or of these devices X2 or X2 Pro I, I felt it felt really good to play I do thoroughly enjoy the experience that I had for the game sir X2 and X2 Pro in that regard but a little negative in the experience is actually with Xbox Game Pass on these devices. You could technically play on both, though X2 Pro is just built for Xbox Game Pass, so it has the buttons and stuff like that mapped properly so that it works a little bit better when you're playing Xbox games. But my biggest gripe with Xbox Game Pass is the fact that you actually have to wait so long to get into a game the graphics seem a little bit watered down unless you have a direct connection it's not going to look the greatest it's not going to play the greatest so really heed your expectations when you're playing xbox game pass on your mobile device via these devices it's not as good as it sounds initially it's the technology just isn't quite to where i think it should be yet it's a cool concept and if it was to work instantly and you could just go and play directly off of Xbox Game Pass and just play over your internet connection and it worked flawlessly, that would be fantastic. But I don't know, I had I had some pretty sloppy games I was playing. There was quite a bit of lag in between my presses when I was playing Mortal Kombat 11. Bear that in mind that in the experience section of this, you do get that free month of Xbox Game Pass, but is it really worth it to the X2 Pro? I'm not 100% sure in that regard once I've played it. It's cool, it's a cool concept, and I think a lot of people may enjoy it if they have a really great internet connection. For me, I have a really pretty basic internet connection. It's not anything to write home about, so for me, it was a little bit of a wishy-washy situation in regards to Xbox Game Pass. Playing all the direct mobile games on this is wonderful. Xbox Game Pass left a little bit too much to write home about, in my opinion. So overall, the experience is fantastic for either of these devices. So if, if you wanted to pick these up and play mobile games all day, I'm sure that you would thoroughly enjoy this. And like I said, you don't have to worry about powering these devices like the Bluetooth ones. These ones are plugged directly into your phone, so they do use a bit of the juice from your phone. So that's gonna be dependent on your battery and your phone. But aside from that, the experience is really great. I also forgot to mention in my build quality section that there is an USB-C pass-through, so if you need to charge your device, you can via the device. It has a USB-C port, so that's really cool and something to take note of in the experience, I guess, is that you can also charge while you're playing. I don't exactly recommend it, but you can charge it at least while it's in the device, so that's nice. So all in all, for the experience, I think these devices are 100% go for the experience. And now let's talk pricing. So for the X2, you're actually gonna be paying about $45 I've seen on Amazon. 
but for the X2 Pro, you're actually gonna be paying about $80. Now they did have some pretty good Prime deals on Amazon when my girlfriend purchased this device for me for my birthday. So that was really awesome. Big shout out to my girlfriend for picking this one up for me and giving it to me for my birthday. But she got it for a, almost at the price of the GameStar X2. So that's something that was really awesome. So if you can catch these on deals occasionally, then obviously this is the 100% one you should go for. At $80, it's a little bit more questionable because at $80, you're getting almost double the price of the regular X2, slightly bigger buttons, slightly longer, a little bit different of a case, and the free month of Xbox Game Pass. But in the experience, I told you that it's nothing to write home about. So do you think that experience is really worth $80 to you? That's up to you, really. You know, like, I, I mean, since we got it for much cheaper, of course I wanted to go to the X2 Pro all day. That's awesome versus the X2. But having the regular X2 isn't much of a problem either. Like if you went and bought that for 45 bucks, it's very inexpensive for a USB-C controller. And it gives you about 95% of what the GameStar X2 Pro does. So for the X2, that's one that I, you know, it's not gonna break the bank. It's gonna give you pretty much all you need. You can play all your games with little asterisks, you know, with the triggers and the smaller buttons, but it's still gonna give you a really great gaming experience. So pricing wise, that is something for you to determine whether or not you wanna spend the additional almost like about $35 for the X2 Pro versus the X2. That's something I'll leave up to you guys. The links will be in the description for you guys to purchase these devices. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you do purchase it through my links, that would help me and this channel out tremendously. So I would really appreciate it if you did go ahead and purchase those things through my links. Otherwise, you can go on the Amazon app if you'd like to, but I would be really grateful if you were to buy it through my links to help my channel out. It doesn't charge you guys anything at all. It just simply helps me out. And that would really be awesome because then it can help me grow this channel and get more content out for you guys. So all in all, pricing is a little bit weird with the whole almost double the price for the X2 Pro versus the X2. So that's something that you guys should really take a look at and check out for yourselves. But I think that both of these devices are well worth your hard earned cash to purchase. So pricing is 100% a go for me as well. So overall, we're looking at two really great devices for two compelling prices that are very similar. You are getting a little bit more with the X2 Pro. You get that free game pass, you get a bunch of stuff, but the X2 for most people will probably be where you're gonna aim just because of how inexpensive it truly is for 45 bucks. I mean, that's, that's almost a no-brainer purchase for a lot of people, so I do completely understand if you just went with the regular X2. I wholeheartedly recommend it. The X2 Pro, I love it. I love playing games with this device here. It's amazing, in my opinion. I love this controller for my phone. I love this controller for all the different phones that it can fix, whether it's a Pixel 8 Pro, whether it's a Galaxy S23 Ultra, whether it's a OnePlus 11. They all do fit perfectly fine in these devices, with the exception of fitting a case. I did not say that earlier, but you would want to take off the case just so it plugs in properly and you can play well. But other than that, these devices are definitely a go for me in all categories. I 100% recommend them. If you are a gamer, whether you're a hardcore gamer, whether you're a mobile gamer, whether you're somebody who's just a casual gamer like myself, I wholeheartedly recommend it to you guys. Check these devices out and don't just let them pass just because they're made by a company that's not necessarily reputable to a lot of people. GameSir definitely built some really great devices here and for going into 2024, I think these are really great devices to check out and spend your hard earned money on. Anyway, that's all for today, you guys. If you really like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you dislike this video, go ahead and hit the dislike button. If you really like this video, go ahead and hit the notification bell and the subscribe button to get more content from me. And as always, I'm Miggy the Tech Guy, and I am out. Peace.